7.5 million will be losing all unemployment benefits early September. How many will find a job? In the meantime, they will have zero income to spend. Fed taper, I don't think so. Every stats I see points to a downturn in the economy. Banks do not want to lend. Businesses do not want to borrow. While the US wastes trillions of dollars in Middle East boondoggles, continues to shovel money and power upwards to Bezos and his ilk, fails to provide healthcare and a basic standard of living to its own populace so spectacularly that life expectancy has been declining in the most powerful country on earth, China is showing some balls and attempting to address the wealth inequality and housing crisis in its own country. All this while they continue to silently extend their influence globally, see Afghanistan and many other examples. 30% of both Generation Z and Millennials have a favorable view of Marxism. 60% of those generations support a complete change of the US economic system away from capitalism. We're witnessing the decline of an empire. Communism will win, and all the while the old men on this board will continue to comment about needing low-wage servants to help them load Chinese-produced crap into their cars from Home Depot. Instead of ending or adjusting this or that feature of federal unemployment benefits, let's simply declare it unconstitutional and end the program immediately. What power in the Constitution, not the fantasy opinions of the Supreme Court, the actual text, grants the federal government to ensure a person's individual employment status? I can't find any. If people want unemployment insurance, someone in their state can sell it to them. Then if they want an extra $300 a week benefit and a year of extensions they can pay the premium for that. Just get the federal government out of this and all the other monopolies it has unconstitutionally granted to itself. The question was always to what extent people would stop working. The big story now is that we got the answer, and the answer is mind-blowing. The vast majority of people are very happy to be economic slaves. The economic and financial system has been one that has provided UBI for the rich for a long time now. In a fair system, the most successful people like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk would be worth hundreds of millions as a reward for their leadership in creating thriving businesses. The mistake that everyone is making is assuming that the three extra zeros are just a meaningless abstraction. But these zeros make the difference between democracy and autocracy. The unemployment bonus was like a test by the elite to see how close the population is to rebelling against the present system. The rich can now safely become trillionaires and quadrillionaires and the population will not care. I thought we'd be forced to end the program early, very early. Never did I think that the average person would rather get paid less money for working than for doing nothing, after watching the biggest scammers in the world get rewarded the most throughout their lives and watching their share of the wealth pie only shrink and shrink over time. They should have gone on strike all along, like an Atlas Shrugged, even if it meant getting paid nothing. The Fed has bifurcated the people there are those who have enough stock to make a difference in their lives. Honey, how much higher is the stock market today? There are those who don't working and trying to break even. This separation is not healthy for society, and perhaps unfair. The asset evaluations are pumped by policy from plugged-in unelected Federal Reserve folk. Reasonable investments and housing is elevated and becomes out of reach for many. Savers are punished by the promoted inflation. Earners are punished by the promoted inflation. The lender has become slave to the borrower. Not all by intentional design via the plugged-in unelected Federal Reserve folk. The American formula was work, save, secure lodging, then invest. Now, leverage yourself up as fast as you can, if it doesn't work out throw the keys in the mailbox. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. Despite all of the craziness that is going on out there, many pundits are trying to convince us that life will soon return to normal, and that great days are just around the corner. They are telling us this despite the fact that we have been in a state of collapse, the real economy continues to implode, the unemployment numbers are going up, civil unrest continues to rage in our streets on a nightly basis, and our entire planet continues to become even more unstable. Those that believe that happy days are here again have a fundamental misunderstanding of the times in which we live. This isn't a period of time when America is going to build back better. Rather, this is a time when America is going to go even deeper into the perfect storm. 
One of the reasons why so many on the left are feeling optimistic right now is because the COVID pandemic appears to be subsiding. According to a CNN analysis of data from Johns Hopkins University, the U.S. is seeing a 29% decline in new COVID-19 cases compared to this time last week, the steepest one-week decline the U.S. has seen during the pandemic. Improvements have been made. In a White House briefing Friday, U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky said the U.S. continues to see a five-week decline, with the seven-day average of cases declining 69% since peaking on last January 11. We are being told that if the numbers continue to plummet like this, soon there won't be a need for masks, social distancing and other restrictive measures any longer. In fact, James Hamblin says that there is a possibility that pre-pandemic life will return even before summer is over. If all of this holds true, it would mean that many aspects of pre-pandemic life will return even before summer is over. Because case numbers guide local policies, much of the country could soon have reason to lift many or even most restrictions on distancing, gathering, and masking. Pre-pandemic norms could return to schools, churches, and restaurants. Sports, theater, and cultural events could resume. People could travel and dance indoors and hug grandparents, their own or others. In most of the U.S., the summer could feel normal. But is this pandemic really over, or is it just transitioning into a new chapter? According to the Daily Mail, the number of confirmed cases of super COVID in the United States is now doubling every 10 days. Super COVID cases have exploded in two states that took opposite approaches to the pandemic. California, which has been under some of the nation's strictest lockdowns, and Florida, which has never had a mask mandate. Cases of the 70% more infectious variant have exploded to 433 in Florida, in less than one month since the first case was discovered there. Of course many experts are far more concerned about the new COVID variants that have emerged in Brazil, India and South Africa. Both of those variants have now made it to the US, and we already know that the current vaccines don't work very well against the new variants. Meanwhile, the US economy continues to crumble right in front of our eyes. On Thursday, we learned that another 861,000 Americans filed new claims for unemployment benefits last week. Last week's initial jobless claims soared to 861,000, despite more states and cities lifting restrictive business measures amid a decline in the number of coronavirus cases. Economists had predicted around 773,000 first-time claims for the week. Data for the previous week was revised up to 848,000 from 793,000. Unemployment claims have been at catastrophic levels for nearly a year, and now they are starting to surge higher once again. We also just learned that a whopping 92% of all restaurants in New York City could not afford to pay their rent. A new report from the New York City Hospitality Alliance shows the extreme financial problems restaurants in New York City are facing, as 92% of the city's restaurants could not afford to pay their rent. The number has steadily worsened throughout the pandemic, from 80% of restaurants in June 2021 not being able to pay rent. 92%. That isn't what a recession looks like. The truth is that we are in an economic depression, and there is no end in sight. At the same time, communities all over the U.S. continue to be plagued by civil unrest and crime. In cities such as Seattle, violent protests and riots have essentially become a nightly occurrence at this point. But most of the violence that we are witnessing is old-fashioned crime. One study found that murder rates in major U.S. cities were up by an average of 30% last year, and the chaos has continued into 2021. If you want to see an example of the lawlessness that is prevailing in our urban areas right now. On top of everything else, our entire planet continues to behave in very unusual ways. It is not normal to see earthquakes of that size in the middle of the country, but of course we are moving into times when all of the old rules will no longer apply. Earlier this month, I wrote an article about how volcanoes all along the Ring of Fire have been starting to pop off like firecrackers. I believe that we have entered a time when we will see natural disasters become increasingly frequent and increasingly powerful, and despite all of our advanced technology, we are exceedingly vulnerable. The events of the past week should be a wake-up call for all of us, because the road ahead is certainly not going to get any easier. If this country could truly afford anything, it wouldn't be trillions in the hole. People think they can afford a house because they can make the payments. The truth is they cannot afford the house. If they could, they wouldn't be borrowing hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
We have developed this strange view that debt is prosperity. It's not. Owing gobs of money is much closer to slavery than prosperity, whether it be at the federal level or the household level. But yeah, Afghanistan was basically for nothing. We spend way too much time and money in the Middle East. This was the Atlantis report. Please like, share, leave me a comment, subscribe, and please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe, sane, and healthy friends.